After you've installed your payroll software, you can launch it for the first time. The welcome screen invites you to license the software. You can opt to license it later if you just want to try out the software first. In this example, let's license it straight away. Enter your account details. This involves an account number and a serial number, which you get from your software supplier. The software is now licensed. After you've licensed your payroll software, you need to specify some administrative settings. Log in as the admin user. The default admin password is PASS. We recommend that you set up your own administrative password. You'll see how in a moment. We recommend that you activate the RSS feed. This keeps you up to date with the latest messages from Sage about this software. Specify the software update settings that suit you. We recommend the option to download updates and install them automatically when you exit. You're logged in as the admin user. This is the user who has rights to specify system level settings. No other user has these rights. Only the admin user sees the admin screen, which is now displayed. You need to do a number of things in the admin screen to get started. First, let's set up the ordinary users who will carry out payroll processing tasks. Go to the security menu. Select Users. The Setup Users screen opens. Let's set up an ordinary user. Click Add. Enter the username they'll use to log in. Give them a user group. The group they belong to determines what features they have access to in the software. Group 1 is already created. This is for users who need access to all features in the software. Check out the help file to learn how to create and edit user groups. Now give the user a password. Notice how you could also change the admin user's password. Click OK to save the new user. Now you need to set up a payroll calendar for this payroll. The calendar determines when pay periods start and when pay dates and other important payroll dates occur. Go to Company Payroll. Select Calendar. Open the New Calendar tab. Specify the date on which your first pay date will occur. This is the date on which employees be paid in the first pay period you process. Also select the days of the week that the system can treat as valid paydays. Click Update. Based on the information you have entered, the remaining key payroll dates in the tax year are set. If you are happy with these dates, save the calendar. You're ready to set the first pay period and start processing pay. Click Set Period. Set the period number. Notice how the system takes key dates from the payroll calendar that you set up earlier. Click OK. To start processing employee pay, click Enter Time and Pay. For users migrating from QuickPay, we recommend the Batch setting. The Batch Time and Pay screen offers a spreadsheet-style way of quickly recording employee pay. Click Save Valid Timesheets. When you've saved every employee's payslip for this pay period, you are ready to end the pay period. Click End of Period. Now you can generate payroll reports for this pay period, such as the Control Summary and the Gross to Net Report. Generate payslips for employees. You can print them out and distribute them physically. Or you can email password protected payslips to employees set up for this service. Don't forget to back up your payroll at the end of each pay run. This ensures that you can always restore the system to a valid state in the event of error or a system failure. To set the next pay period, simply click Set Period.
Specify the new pay period number. Like before, the key dates are taken from the payroll calendar. You're now in the next pay period. You're ready to begin processing employee pay in this period.